Hi, everyone. Welcome to Freebird Spirit YouTube channel. Uh, we, and welcome to uh, Wisdom Behind Awakenings uh, discussion number 14 with Chris. And um, we're excited to dive into this discussion today um, as it's linked into the last uh, discussion we had. And in regards to um, we Harvey Milk showed up in our last discussion and um kiss me and, on the yes yeah kiss curse on the forehead she got a kiss on the forehead uh -huh. um but um and, and he had uh, kind of informed us that there was going to be a series of something that uh, he wanted to bring in and so we are continuing that today but welcome chris hi how are you I I don't have any babies in my life. No, you don't. But I I I'm forcing mine on you. <laughs> yes, and, and I love that because I've been sitting around looking at them, going, oh, and then the one with with the th with the three kids and and Sierra and the baby, I just burst into tears. It was like, oh my oh, god, that's so gorgeous. Is it? Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. It's a lot. So if for those of you who don't know, um. Uh, I have a new granddaughter, Farah Sophia, and um, so she was welcomed into to the world so bravely um, on November 26th, so we're happy and so blessed to have her um, with us, so that's what we're talking about there. Uh, okay. And my oldest heart daughter is giving birth on the 14th of December. So there's another one coming. Another. So we're being, we're getting these babies and apparently yeah. they're. The crystal babies. Crystal right? babies. Yeah. Crystal yeah. babies. So that's, that's new for me too. I'm going to have to look that up. So um, in discussion today, uh, I'm hoping to dive into some of the history of the LGBTQIA plus um community and um because this is not new uh for for those of you who are wondering this is not a new uh um uh, being gay homosexuality this this is not new <laughs> i know that there's some people out there that feel like um why if all of a sudden this is happening in in our world or whatever it is not all of a sudden it has been here for a very long time, but I feel because of society and um, the danger, <laughs> right? The dangers, um, you know, stayed in the closets or in the caves or however you want to uh, put that uh, for safety. So I wanted to talk about that. So I'm going to kind of ask you, Chris, about because I know that you are familiar with some of the historical figures that maybe we're not aware of that were gay. And so, it's right? Just, I mean, you just throw me under the bus. Yeah, I, okay. I do it every week. Yeah, yeah, every time we have um, a confession, I don't know why it's new for you. <laughs> <laughs> why are you surprised? <laughs> 14 times in, it's like, okay, yeah. my turn. Um, and uh, you know, I can use this with you. It's, uh, my little, there you go. There you go. See, <laughs> I have one of those too. Do you? Yeah. Well, wow. love this. This is my new life, my new, uh, my new accessible house. Um, I, you know, I, I have to admit up front that this is really boring for me. <laughs> okay. And it's really boring because I've been dealing with this for as long as I can remember. There you so go. There's, there's that. that. Okay. And, you know, as a kid who grew up gay, I was sort of like, you know, when I started finding out that there were other people, it was like, whoa, okay. I didn't know what it was, you know, so I didn't know what it was. Anyway. Um, and then when I started teaching and because I was a gender specialist, you know, I was teaching this stuff all the time. Um, but I have to say that I think one of the real reasons this has been in our faces so much lately 
there's many reasons, but one of the reasons is because the right will always attach itself to fear factors, right? Fear. So, you know, um, so I'm going to scare you now, uh, you know, so don't say gay in schools <laughs> as if you can control those children's mouths. Good luck with that. Right. I told you before, I went into Molly's class school when she was in seventh grade and I opened up the door of the school and the kids were all yelling at each other. You're so gay. They were all yelling at not one. It was like a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to, it's not going to go away. It's not going to go underground. It's not going to be controlled. So I think that, you know, that one of the factors is this idea that, well, what you just said, that, that we, we, some people, I don't know who they are, but some people think that this is rare or not usual. Um, and then we've got people who, um, you know, want to control it because they've attached to a religious narrative, as you would say, mm -hmm. that says you can't, that can't be real. But I think one of the pieces that's really... Um, or that it's an abomination and you need to be killed. <laughs> well, there's that. And, you know, that was the Anita Bryant days. I mean, I almost destroyed many television sets because, you know, they'd get on there and say this incredibly horrible stuff, which was absolutely not true. Yeah. You know, and then we had that huge priest scandal, right? Yeah. And the priest scandal was about priests who were pedophiles. Yeah. And suddenly I'm going, they're priests. You know, hello? <laughs> this isn't that a bunch of gay guys out in the street. You know, this is, these are priests. Yeah. yeah. So that blew up. But I think that one of the pieces that's, I mean, others can say whatever they want. I, this is just my perspective. But I think one of the reasons that it's come out so much is because in the Michael Jackson days, um, at a moment in history, when American industries are failing and we don't have anything to replace them with, you know, the steel industry goes away, you know, there's a whole bunch of shifts economically. At the same moment, Michael Jackson is, is having cosmetic surgeries to change his face and his appearance, as is Elizabeth Taylor. Mm -hmm. Now, suddenly we're realizing, and this evolved through that period, that you can change your looks that you can change your body and that, uh, um, and that, and that there's a whole industry that's now going to grow up and take the place of these other industries. We didn't see it coming. We didn't know it was going to happen, but all of a sudden the fitness craze, you know, gyms, um, cosmetic surgeries, you know, I mean, you name it. And I have always called it sort of the, um, the body industry. But the the um, I was actually going to do that book one day and I never did it um, because you could also imagine a group of scholars getting together and, and carving out each of the pieces of that industry and sort of laying it out. But that was one of the one of them. And so so all of a sudden what had been rare. In, in the public eye where uh, and there were a couple of really famous cases. Um, one of them in Canada, where a, uh, a man becomes a woman, which is, of course, oh, my God, the sky is falling, right? Mm -hmm. man became, oh, yeah. my God, yeah. how could that be? How could we let that happen? That is just beyond anything. Horrific. I mean, think about how silly that is. Why do we care? Right, right. What? Why do we care? And so... Um, so, it, so that is we, truly the link that, I mean, that's truly this where you need to look. If you respond to issues like someone, uh, changing from a man to a woman, if you respond to that, like in, in any check out, why, why do you care? Go well, they in, got the reason inward. Then. <laughs> They've got their reasons, and we should talk yeah. about that. But yeah, we will. You know, they're going to rely on these other fictions. But at any rate, uh, one of the things that happened then was that it became possible. Um, but what I watched, and I saw it a lot with college students, what I watched was that not like the earlier episodes where someone just, you know, the, 
or whether they're intersex. You know, sometimes babies are born with the features of both sexes. And, and the, in the U.S., we correct that, which is in, not the case in most parts of the world. Um, but when you, when we, you know, so what, what am I trying to say? So I'm, I'm getting tongue tied. Um, the, uh, it became more commonplace to, 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 to have students. So I had a student who came to me who was an artist and she was giving herself testosterone shots and she did a painting of her arm with a needle in it, getting her testosterone shots which I then immediately got rid of because I thought it was horrible to look at. Um, but she started talking to me about how her friends, her feminist friends, um, and I think they were gay, um, essentially started calling her the man and they didn't trust her anymore. Wow. Um, and so I'm listening to her process this and I'm of course trying to bracket off my own feelings, but listening to her and saying and so and so then I start right this was way back then I start saying every time a student would come to me and tell me I'm transitioning I'd say why why are you transitioning um because now keep in mind you know the work that I did that we talked that talked about in the past was way before this so I've already got the critical mindset about heterosexuality as an institution and what it does and all that. So what they would say commonly, if these were young women, they would commonly say, well, I always like playing with trucks. And I'd say, and so that means you're going to change your sex? Well, yeah, because I really, I always wanted to be a boy. What, how did you know? Well, you know, I like playing with boys' toys. I'm thinking to myself, Something's wrong with this picture. Um, yeah, it's complicated. You know, it's not a simple issue. There are many people who experience, have a physical experience that it's not, does not match up with how we've socialized somebody. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so what... American society has done and the medical establishment has made available is well if you're not comfortable then you can change yourself so that but so now of course there are a million videos out there there's a lot of evidence out there and there are a lot of people changing their bodies to fit with what they felt was more natural you know and it gets really really complicated um you know, it, I I think the the real the real turning point for me in all of that was a student who came to me and was working on her senior thesis, his senior thesis, their senior thesis, um, on what it meant to transition from female to male, and the student looked like why what I looked like when I was their age, almost identical, and I just sort of kept looking at them and saying. Oh my God. Oh my God. Would I have done that? Mm. Would I have done that? You know, the sort of classic, you know, it, it, this is history. You know, in the old days, you could be like I was and be called the tomboy. Right. 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 And then it morphed. Then you became, oh, you must be a dyke. It's like, I can't just be who I am, mm. you know? And so, um, so anyway, when I, worked with her I worked with them um that was hard that was hard because I was really trying to bracket off my sense of who I was and what would I have done and how did this work and I was pretty certain that I wouldn't have done what they did you know I wouldn't have gone to the lengths of that but it's a different age group you know it's a different time period you know we're not so afraid of getting shots you know we're not so afraid of you know, getting hormone replacement stuff. And it's also um, not the sexual revolution anymore. Now there are certain things that are so, so normative, nobody thinks about it. You know, I've got a date tonight. I'm going to go meet this guy at Starbucks and then we're going to go have sex. Okay. You know, and it's like, and that's it. Yeah. I, do you like them? I don't know. But we're going to have sex and, you know, I don't know if I'll see him again. 
you know, it's like, I'm going to go have a cup of tea. You know, it's like, it was like, what? So, and then students started doing um, their senior thesis on um, stripping and on um, uh, hooking up. And I started learning what has become more normative now that wasn't, you know, in years past. Anyway, so the, the whole trans thing, um, the whole trans thing, the whole queer thing, the whole gay thing has changed radically since the 60s, just radically. So the, so the reality is that prior to those movements, the LGBTQ people were everywhere. They always were. They just weren't out. Exactly. But, you know, I, I had an episode, well, probably in the, I think it was probably in the 80s, late 80s. I was teaching at a community college. And I was teaching a gender studies class. And the topic was up about, you know, what's a homosexual? What's a, what, you know, all of that stuff. It was very basic. And I had a friend who I went to graduate school with who has since died of breast cancer, Elaine, and she was a minister. And she, um, we went to graduate school together and uh, she's very progressive. And she said, would you like me to come and talk to your class? And I said, yeah. Come talk to my class. So she knew the Bible inside and out. And she also knew biblical history. And she was also a sociologist. So um, she taught all of us. And she put it in context. She said, remember, the Jews had been exiled and into Egypt. And they were coming back from that. And their numbers were threatened. So what do the what do the religious leaders do? They say man should not lie with man because then you're wasting your seed. Your job is to repopulate. That's not the same as saying two guys shouldn't have sex together. That's not the same at all. So she put it in that context and it it was a like a light for me, you know, it was like Pay attention to the historical record. Don't just buy the religious arguments because they're out there, but listen to the historical record. Who the hell are these people who are saying this stuff? And what are they talking about? And the same thing about the, um, what was the other passage? You know this other passage. The other passage about, um, it was really about hospitality. It's about, what what was it? What is it? You're they were giving up their daughters to sleep with um a guest. Mm -hmm. It's like and and it became one of those passages about um about this, same sex relations. Yeah, was this in um like in regards to Lot and his family and that time period? See, I I do I do this. I know, <laughs> I know. You know this stuff, and I, I don't. do. But I, uh, when oh. you throw it on the spot like that, I'm trying to remember. Um, but uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, there is another passage in regards to. Yeah, it's a it's a. Yeah. It's very famous. I know it is. It's, it's you know it's like it's not Sodom and Gomorrah, but it's some one of those passages that gets cite, cited all of them, and it turns out that it was the male head of the household who um <laughs> okay oh, so please. um bb bb's bb's not barking anymore so we are back <laughs> bb is uh is my great protector all 11 pounds Aww. <laughs> but she, you know, and she okay today, so, so kind of getting back to where we were we were talking about um the true well, yeah history and, and kind of like uh shifting through uh, or sifting through um the history uh, uh and coming through uh some of these bible verses but how they were kind of tweaked a bit 
And I really, I want to revisit the one verse that you, um, that you were um, trying, that you were talking about, about um, where the sociologist yeah, Elaine was, Elaine was talking about that it was really in regards to hospitality and um, in regards to the verse that is brought up about um, uh, men sleeping with men and and so forth and how and I do believe it was Lot and his family um, with that verse and how um, the angels came to his house uh, and he hosted them to stay the night and then the a bunch of townsmen young and old came to the house to um and demanding to send them out so they could have sex with them <laughs> and uh this is the story how the story goes and lot refused um because you know i am hosting these these guests and he refused and then he said but i do have two virgin daughters that i can send out to you which tells you what uh property there you go um but anyway all that to say that um uh that's in regard that's where she was talking about this is about hospitality this is how when people came to visit people would offer their daughters to them because the daughters didn't count for anything didn't count for anything it wasn't and that's why i said the thread that runs through so much of this stuff you know, we talked about reproductive rights. We talked about marriage. We talked about a whole range of things that are the ways in which patriarchy has been institutionalized. And these texts, which are not the original texts, they are not the um, they were not written by um, Jesus. They were not. I mean, you know, why we get caught in it I'm, is um, always been a mystery to me. Um, it's literally hundreds of years after Jesus died that they start, you know, producing these publications. And then the man who takes it and has it translated into English is King James, who was gay. So, you know, <laughs> you sort of sit there and go, okay, what's going on here? So, so I think that, and, and this, my friend Donna said to me, you know, you should really make a chart. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what would the chart be? She said, you know, you've got all these links. And I said, well, they're all linked. They're all linked in patriarchy. Okay. Yes. The history of patriarchy is a history of male domination. It's manifested in a whole variety of forms and it's historical. It's not natural. It's historical. It's, you know, it, it yeah. So, um, so when you start to look at the various ways that women have been shut down, women have been controlled, part of what goes on with homophobia is the destruction of the female. Now, mm -hmm. listeners might say, what are you talking about? We don't want men taking the position of women in sex. We don't want men wearing women's clothing. We don't want men to be, quote, feminine, um, and if they're going to be, we're going to destroy them. Okay. So we've got a history around that too. But then we don't want women to act like men because they're not, you know, because you're not really men. Yeah, right. You're taking my, my role. And they're taking my women. And you taking know, my women. Some of the more notorious women from other decades um, who stood up to the law basically said i can take a woman anytime i want one <laughs> it's like that sort of stuff but um but yeah there's a i mean this is this is cultural it's um it's very disturbing it's really very disturbing and the way in which women were used really to service men you know so um yeah so you can see this thread of uh uh fear and mm -hmm. and um uh, uh, and reaction and reaction to it um this this guttural um animalistic reaction to with this fear 
and so um, and how to shut it down from the threat of themselves or uh, the masculinity and men and and like that i kind of want to revisit um back to um you know some of your time that you had when uh people were coming to you uh, during their transition you know uh, making um uh, deciding they wanted to uh transition to uh, male or female depending on Mm -hmm. which way and um because because now it was um something you, you could do and you could see it was playing out like you said um and um it it was now an option it it was no longer just an option to uh dress if i was a female and i wanted it and i i felt like um i was really more comfortable as a male uh living that out as a male uh you, i would dress like a male I would have cut my hair. I would have dressed like a male. I would have bought male clothes. And, and that's how I, that would have been transition because that was what you could, you know, that was what was out there. You didn't have the surgeries because it wasn't there or the shots or like that. Mm -hmm. But as time went on, like you said, it became available. So they, they're like, oh, I don't only have to just dress and cut my hair like, and bind myself anymore. I can actually have surgery done. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and so it, it uh, do we have to understand, uh, do we have to understand where a person has, is at, do we have to understand where a person is at to make this choice to accept it? Or do we just say, um, we love you and we accept you in your choices. And that's that. No, we don't have to understand. We just don't, do we? No, we don't. We, but we, but as humans, it's like we we feel like we have to understand and wrap our minds around. Uh, well, because we've made, this, into, we've made it into a sin and we've made it into a crime. So then, so then people and, start and that, making and, it into yeah. a sin. They yeah. say this is sin. Then they make it a crime, punishable mm -hmm. by death. You know, <laughs> they do all these things because they can't. They don't understand it for themselves. Now, here's the thing: we don't understand. I don't understand my next door neighbor. Does it? Does it? Be, some of the choices they make, right? And I'm making that up because I, I love my neighbors. But I'm just saying, even if I don't understand why. Uh, you know, uh, someone's acting up in a, a, a line at um, at the grocery store, and I'm trying to wrap my mind around. And we do this every day. How can someone vote for 45? I can't wrap my mind around that. Does it matter if I can wrap my mind around that? There's a human being who's in that position in their life, uh, and that's how they view life. That's how they see it. Do I have to understand them to send to to walk in love and light and just allow them to be who they are, wherever they are? My head just exploded. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> because I got like five million things connected to what you just said. Awesome. Okay. Well, really, because think about what we've talked about forever and what you know everyone out in the the family's been talking about is that is the the way in which the divine feminine is increasing right mm -hmm. so it makes sense that as the divine feminine becomes more present and it has more women in congress than ever in history you know more women governors i mean it's like okay we're starting to see this rise the backlash is going to be significant. It already is. Okay. So we see that all the time. I keep hearing this voice that said to me today, um, don't long to be free of the current of change in life. Mm. Don't long to be free of the current of change in life. Because when you long to be free of that, you block the creative so somewhere in here, 
as we watch these things evolve, we're also watching the way the creative is changing the landscape, all of this, right? So before the defined feminine can become sort of matter of fact, which is a long time off, but it's going to go through these waves, mm -hmm. right? Um, the other part of this is that for patriarchy to persist, it has to create structures that reinforce itself, okay? So, and they have to do it, there's a word that was coined years ago called hegemony, where, where the powerful maintain their power with your consent. So you create structures and you create texts that um, teach people how to comply with the cultural norms that keep them powerful. It's with your consent. Mm. So that's one of the problems that we face all the time with public education around issues of race and issues of gender and issues of, of disability, all, all of that stuff. Um, because those structures are set up to keep people compliant with the ruling order. So what we have is we have a ruling order that has used Christianity and its texts mm -hmm. to keep patriarchy in place and to use fear as a strategy to say, if you don't comply, then you will be damned forever. Mm -hmm. And I told you about the time I was sitting in the, church when my aunt died and the minister came to the edge of the of the altar and stood staring at me and said if you don't say that you will be saved you will never sit at the feet of jesus and i was like my first of all my heart was hurting because that was my aunt right and when he's pointing at me i turned to my sister and said so 99 percent of the people on this earth will never be saved will never sit at the feet of jesus what is the matter with you? That doesn't even make sense. Right. Yeah. You no, know? I'm like going, what? Yeah. And, the, and you call this Christianity? You call this, I mean, the core of Christianity was supposed to be love. What happened to that? Where is that? Where so, is that you know, tactic? where that tactic doesn't work is those who don't fall, don't respond to fear tactics. Yeah. And so a lot of people respond to fear. So they're going to go, oh, I, 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 I'm going to believe I'm going to do whatever because I don't want to, I, I don't want to be in hell for it. You know what I mean? So the, people respond to fear. A lot of people respond to fear. And um, we were, we were groomed that way to respond to fear. You, and, you know, I, I feel like I've talked about that before, the grooming of fear uh, to respond to fear. We do that to our kids. From the get go, you know, yeah. if you do that, you're going to, you know, so, you know, so it, it's, well, it's even how we discipline our kids, right? That's what we, I'm saying. We discipline, we discipline it's our all kids with fear, right? Fear. We're right. Grooming but, fear our but it's a particular kind of fear. Yeah. It's a particular, it's, it's called you, you do it my way or you won't be loved. Right. You do it my way or you aren't a member of this family. Mm -hmm. Now, I, you know, I've said this before, I heard that a million times, families whose children were gay saying these horrific things. Yeah. You know, you're not part of my family. You're not okay. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, you might as well say, I'm going to go send you to a cliff and push you off of it because you need to be killed. You know, you, you need to not survive this, but it's, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, I want to follow this real quick here um, before we pass over it. Um, linking it to the, how does this, um, how does this link to a awakening? Well, the yeah. awakening comes in when we no longer have the need to, to control or change others that aren't like us don't do like uh, we do we you can see uh in different 
and you can see it playing out how if you okay so oh they don't eat they don't uh, i'm gonna make a scenario you guys you know how i do this they <laughs> they don't set the table like i set the table I, i'm not comfortable i'm not going to eat there because they they don't set the table like i set the table oh, that doesn't feel good to me your mouth is open yeah or or they eat with their mouth i, I don't feel comfortable uh, that's weird i'm uh, they they're not doing it right they don't right. do it right. They're not right. doing it right. They don't, they don't do it like or me. They They're not doing it right. Hands. That is yeah. not right. Right. And so if we stay in that mentality that people have to do set their table like you set their table or eat their dinner like you eat your dinner, we're stuck, people. But if you can uh embrace that, oh, they do it that way. That is that's diff that's different and very cool. That's not like, but I don't need to, I don't have that innate need to make them do it like I do it. That's where the awakening is. Right at the, right at that level of uh, releasing the need to make people like you to make it okay. Does that make sense? Am I saying that right, Chris? Well, you're well. You're saying what you think, so of course it's right. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to word it. No, no, you're clear. It's clear. Okay. I mean, it's clear. It's very clear um so yeah, that's there, the there are many features to that yeah yeah and so there's levels of awakening with that as well guys so um you know once you, you, you once you release that need to make everyone like do it like you do or live like you live um because that's the right way and allowing the knowledge to go oh that's just the way i do it it, it doesn't make it right or wrong it's just the way I do it. I don't need to make other people be like me. Right. So, and looking at that too, why do we need people to be like us? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you're, big, you're asking really big questions. Big you're, questions today. You know, the going back to the awakening piece, awakening comes in many forms, but primarily it's about seeing the contradictions. You know, it's about, we talked about this before, Brown versus Board of Education was pointing out the contradictions around separate but equal, right? It's about being able to see that this is really contradictory. You're telling them liberty and justice for all, and yet it's not, you know, it's and not. you're you're saying, you're saying liberty and justice for all, and, and they're having equal education, and it's clear when we test them that they're not having equal education. And it's also clear that you're socializing them to not be positive about black skin, but to only be positive about white skin. I mean, these are the contradictions, right? And I said that before about the the message about marriage. You know, you're going to, you know, live happily ever after. You're going to meet, you know, and my mother used to say this to me all the time. I just want you to meet someone who's going to sweep you off your feet and and marry you and you live happily ever after and my response was always is that what happened to you <laughs> uh, well no but okay <laughs> hello <laughs> but you know it's like it, 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 that sort of stuff you know those are those are those moments mm -hmm. you know where where domestic violence rears its ugly head you know where abuse rears its ugly head and you know those moments where you stay you know those are the those are the moments. Those are the, they call them conjunctural moments, but those are the moments where beliefs come into direct conflict with each other and the contradictions become so great that you wake up. Mm. You go, wait a minute, I can't do this anymore. So um, so fear becomes a tool mm -hmm. of, of oppression. Yes. Fear becomes... Fear being ostracized, social control becomes a tool. It's a tool used to maintain a power structure, even if it's local or if it's you know massive. It's it's a tool. So I will kill you. I will harm you. I will take your money. I will destroy your children. Those are those are fear tactics. But when you put them on the level of something that's so much less, seems less consequential. You know, uh, and people go like, well, okay, I, I guess I could stay, you know. And so we do this, we yeah. do this, did this dance, you know. Yeah. I don't want to go to school and then be ostracized by my classmates. You know, that's fear, fear of not belonging, mm 
Mm -hmm. and and a lot of people don't come out because of fear not no 100 percent. it was yeah. it, so, it, it's a it's an issue it, it's a yeah. you know f part of my own story is you know i was i was adopted um and part of part of that challenge is that you already feel on the outside of everybody yeah. like you do not belong anywhere already right on top of um, on top of that, you know, being gay on top of being, you know, there's so many layers to my story, but I just wanted to be normal, uh, you know, on top of being a psychic medium, but not, I didn't have those words. So uh, constantly feeling very, very different than everybody. The last thing I wanted to do was bring, it was, uh, I just wanted to be, I just wanted to be normal. I just wanted to not have something that I was being <laughs> challenged on every side. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. Definitely a thing. Yeah. So um, back to uh, understanding the history before we move forward, just a little more before we move forward here, we have King James who wrote the Bible or did, wrote the who hired the people to translate the Bible gay. into English. And he had, was gay. Yeah, the and, power of censorship. Yeah, power of censorship. He he was gay himself. Um, who else in history? We have you said Eleanor. Oh my God, the list is enormous. Yeah, let's. I want to hear the list. I want to hear the list. <laughs> well, but I I think one of the things that's powerful about the list is that um that uh is because it was not acceptable because of because the cultural norms around acceptance which by the way are social class based not among the poor the wealthy when the super wealthy would say well that's fine you can go and have a female lover yeah just stay married yeah yeah right so yeah that stuff um, and yet, what 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 scholars really historians have been doing since the '60s really is mining all of these stories, um, the Boston marriages, the various forms that it took, where women would have female lovers, where men would have male lovers. You know, some of them would hang on to the God. I had this experience. Um, in the 70s where I, there was a gay guy at work and we would go over to his house for dinner and his partner would come his male partner who was married to a woman and he would have dinner with us and then he'd leave and go back to his wife you know i mean we call those things things like affairs but they were managing what they didn't think they would be able to manage mm -hmm. right and um so as time has opened this up more and more, it's become more honest, but it was always there. So you've got Eleanor Roosevelt who had a female partner. You have, um, um, I don't have the list up, but you know, the, the uh, you have, you have tons of people who um, people we've, we've celebrated um, uh, writers and musicians and, um politicians and and cultural leaders um who have had various forms of relationships with people of the same sex or different sex and i never say opposite because there is no such thing but um you know and that's the other part of this whole thing which is to understand that nature is highly variable highly variable and so um you know, there is no such thing as opposite sexes. There is no such thing as um, men and women are different. There is no such thing. W women are as different from each other as women are from men. And, it, you know, that's the that's the part, that's the piece that we so, can't... So Venus, our women are from, are from Mars, men are from Mars, Venus... Oh, he made that Mars. up and he was totally off. The, the, that was... I, oh man, he book. sold a lot of books, right? <laughs> he sold a lot of books and it was a lot of crap and people <laughs> bought it and they stayed with it. 
And then I and then there's my hero, Joan Rupgarden, who wrote Evolution's Rainbow, which I've talked about before. And uh she sort of exposed all of the stuff around how variable nature is. You know, while we're sitting there saying, oh, look, a male and female cardinal and they're having sex. You know, it's like, you know, we're imposing, was it, what's it called? Anthropomorphizing um, human life, human culture onto, onto, the, animal, onto right? the animal kingdom. And, you know, and I've said this before, the Geico commercial has male geckos and there aren't any. So how do they reproduce? There are no male geckos. Right. So... So, yeah, so very, flu I feel like we are moving towards a more fluid, um, fluid yeah. understanding of, um, of, right. of sexuality and, and um, thus sexes or whatever, um, where it will be just more fluid and just, it won't matter that we have to categorize and put into uh, boxes to understand. And that takes me back to some of the challenges we've been looking at of, of, of when we try to box things in and understand them in our human mind and we can't, uh, and then the fear, the fear and the challenge, those challenges is uh, that it, it's like a hamster wheel. When are we getting off the hamster wheel, Chris? Well, when we stop reducing relationships that are built on love and commitment to sex mm. when we stop thinking that when we're talking about lgbtq stuff we're talking about sex mm. that's the that's the the cultural thread that runs through all of it what foucault used to call the repressive hypothesis that because religions were so repressive that it made sex even more titillating Mm. and um and so and made it more uh sinful more evil more you know just more awful you know so instead of it being instead of us being in a culture and i bought that package you shameful know, I, so shameful yeah, mm -hmm. the shame i bought the, the package you know i grew mm -hmm. up in a family where my grandfather was an evangelical minister and i bought the package that you know that love was love was it love was all that's all there was that's mm -hmm. all there was and i kept saying to myself well then but i can only love certain people you know how does this right. make any sense oh well if that person's catholic and you don't like them so like you can't love them that doesn't make any sense you know it's like <laughs> yeah these are those and when you said awakening those are those moments yeah that's yeah. when you're you're saying wait a minute these teachings don't hold up because yeah. they don't make any sense. It doesn't yeah. work. So we make sex dirty. We make pornography. You know, we make we make all sorts of stuff that makes the body the site of sin and all of that crap. And and it's and women, of course, have bought that in a really big way because we can't feel like we're okay out in public unless we look a certain way. You know, because we've got to be, you know, sexually um, attractive, mm -hmm. you know. And so so there's th all sorts of threads that run through this. Th these topics are absolutely enormous. And there are a lot of people who've done a lot of research on these things and have exposed a lot of it. It's um, what's unfortunate is that some of it's already, you know, disappearing. And what's also unfortunate is that some of us still don't have access so, um, you know, I was blessed enough to be in school, in graduate school at a time when all this stuff was coming out. And so I got to see it and read about it and talk about it. But, you know, I was just looking to, to see who, who we uh, want to, who we want to out right now. <laughs> yeah. But who are we going to out? Sally Ride, the astronaut. She was gay. Uh, Tim Cook, of course, the head of Apple Corporation. Um, <laughs> Mary Trump. Um, Mary Trump, isn't she married? Does it matter? No, it doesn't. But it doesn't matter. No, I, I know, I know, I know that for well. But yeah, she's she's said that. I'm looking right here. Women says 
A gay author searched on by more than anyone is President Trump's niece, Mary Trump, author of Too Much and Never Enough. Is Mary gay? This says she, that, you know, you, you can check it out. I will. James, James Baldwin, a um, famous author. Um, I mean, the lists are enormous, but some of these names are not names you typically know. Oscar Wilde, of course. Um, Brandy Carlisle. Um, uh, of course, Peter B Pete Buttigieg, <laughs> who everybody's saying will be our, uh, the next Democratic president. Um, we now have a lesbian who's governor of Massachusetts, um, Angela Davis. Yay. <laughs> um, you know, I recognize a lot of these names mostly because these are people who sort of paved the way. Harvey Milk. Um, um, gay actors. <laughs> so if you... Um... Yeah, you know, looking back to uh, you know Eleanor Roosevelt and her time, mm -hmm. um, what what do you what can we bring forward as far as her story that will help us today? Or maybe we could Eleanor ask her. Roosevelt was a major player on the global stage. You know, she became the the legs for Franklin. Um, but she was brilliant in her own right and, and a social justice advocate. And, and, <laughs> and Franklin supported her in this. Yeah. In but, her... He was also having an affair with a woman at the same time. Um, yeah. So, but they um, were, um, because what I'm getting from her is that he was very, it was very a supportive and understanding. And uh, she said you would use the word progressive. Are you talking to her? Yeah, she's talking. She, I mean, she just came in, and when you were talking, she just came in. So I'll talk to her because so she's, she's she's saying, um, you know that you know we would consider uh, their relationship as very progressive, mm -hmm. and um, but she said uh, we would say that. She said it's so interesting um, because of the certain you know they were at a certain class and i think it's familiar to what you were saying earlier about the different class systems and how it was mm -hmm. okay in in the higher in, in the upper class classes like it was it was an, an issue as much as you would find in some of the other uh you know what you would consider a lower lower classes um but um so she said you would you you would be surprised i guess if um to 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 know how um actually uh popular this was or i don't know if you use the word popular but common. it happened what it was common 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 That's very common very common she said um very very common and um and accept and and accepted mm -hmm. like it wasn't and see that's the thing it, there was, there wasn't, it wasn't, of course you don't, you don't talk about your sex lives with your neighbors. I mean, so that's not like something that, you know, everybody would know about because you just, that's not something you do anyway. Right. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, so she said, um, uh, that yes. And, but the way the society was set up, um the way the system is set up as far as um um progressive progressing and and women's rights and and uh the, the patriarchy at the time um you know this is how the system was set up and it worked it, uh um it, you know everything has its challenges but it it worked the best that it could um She's saying we we still have a long way to go to be that fluid, but it, she said it's progressing that direction. Um, there's been great strides, but in getting there, you know, you you have to flush out 
the the under bellies. Mm -hmm. So as the under bellies are are, yeah. are are flushed out, then um, at that point, um, uh, I, I mean, that's kind of what we're in the middle of right now. The underbellies are being flushed out. <laughs> that that um, people who are not willing uh, to um, be free of the current of life. <laughs> she likes that quote. Uh, okay. Um, any questions we want to ask her while she's here? It's called living in your truth. Living in your truth. Yes. And I think that's the direction we've been moving yeah, in. For we are moving in that direction. Just but she's accepting the reality that 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 life is full of variation all kinds of variation and accepting the facts that the fact that we can love whoever um you know i think we've set up rules about um things like age you know but um she's saying we put so much weight on sexuality and sex and mm -hmm. and like that she said that that we need to shift from putting so much weight on to that yeah um you know focus on equality mm -hmm. human rights mm -hmm. this um, is the woman who masterminded the development of the universal declaration of human rights oh <laughs> everyone in the world all the representatives at the un to sign on she did that in 1947 oh, the year okay. i was born yes wow okay so because she's holding a sign that says human rights yes. she's one has to focus on human rights um and you know the this other focus is a distraction and and um but as we focus on human rights the rest will flow into mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. And so it's like a, a refocus would be helpful. Okay. Um, yeah. It's just, you know, between her and, and Harvey Milk, it's like you just brought in two of my heroes. <laughs> it's like, Wow, cool. I mean, we we developed a course when I was at my in my former job called Women in the World. And um it was a women's college. So we would spend time uh focusing on what had women done around the world. And um and we studied her and we brought Blanche Wiesen Cook to campus who had done her biography and um you know it just she was she Eleanor Roosevelt made an enormous difference. She was a spectacular human. So yeah, I I, I agree. Um, do we have any questions for her before she shuffles off? Um, the main question I have is how do we move from uh, how how do we go about moving the masses from this fixation on civil rights to human rights? She's like, uh, so the uh, it, it sounds like the 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 main um, shift here is um, taking it from a, a where where your own feelings have been hurt. Uh, I'm trying to get the message here, so maybe you can help me with the context because I want to say this correctly. But um, it's almost like um, civil rights is more personal, and right. and human rights is more of a uh a, 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 that's the big shift that's the big shift when you when you step out of the civil rights where it's almost like that's personal and you're coming at that from um that energy um mm -hmm. and and it's not global enough it's not uniting enough it's 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 singular mm -hmm. that we need to focus on the more the group think here the more of the group think and that's where the human rights come into 
Mm-hmm. Um, yes, on the civil right. Yes, on the, all these things. But when you're for for change in civil rights and change in um, equality, uh, women equality, change in um, uh, these different uh, marginalized groups, um, uh, it's human rights. And the and when you focus on the, the bigger thing, the rest will fall into place. But when you when you're doing the singular think, mm-hmm. it's not it's not big enough. It's it's uh-huh. it's not broad enough to bring mm-hmm. in the change. Mm-hmm. And she said, and thus human rights. Right. That's right. That's right. Malcolm X knew that too. Malcolm X would talk about the difference between civil rights and human rights. And he would he made that argument as well. The um civil rights stuff is very like minutia. It's like I want the right to um what pick something, do something, right? I want I want to I want to have equal access to that doorway, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not the same as saying human rights are the foundation of all existence. Okay. Mm-hmm. For humans, right? Right. So that I have the right to bear children if I choose. I have the right to warmth. I have the right to food. I have the right to safety. Those are those big, yeah. big overarching pieces. Right. And that's what that's why what she did with these uh, representatives from all over the world to sign off on this document was so profound because they were all in agreement. They agreed. It took her a long time and other people working with her to make it happen. But they made it happen. They made a document that said, here are a list of human rights and we all agree. Now, do we keep to it? No. But it is a document that helps the United Nations um, guide its um, practices. So it's a pretty powerful piece. But she's right. Totally right. So when we talk about, so I think what, what, where I'm going with that, with what you and I've talked about is that when we talk about, oh, um, a, a, con- a, a state that uh, just made it illegal for people to get an abortion, we're talking about civil rights. Yeah. Okay. When we talk about women's right to choose, that is women's right to own their own body and to protect their own health care. Now we're talking about human rights. So when you get caught in the minutia and the battle, you're in the civil rights argument and you're keeping that argument going. But when you go to the bigger place, um, when you go to the more systemic thing, mm-hmm. uh, the more um, essential rights, then, yes. then, then the argument changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Eleanor. I know. I was just thanking her. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Ellen, um, yeah. for coming in with that, that yeah. powerful message and direction uh, as you continue to direct and help us. So thank you. Um, well, Chris, I feel like this is a a good spot to break from our discussion. Um, there's a lot to think about. I feel like we are... Um, it, it, I can see where Harvey was saying it's going to be because I can see the string of it. Um, so as this one leads into the next discussion, um, but I want to kind of leave this here for folks to kind of chew at it and 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 bring please bring in your own comments and understanding of this as well and your stories. Uh, we love hearing your stories as well, and um, and and that so. But thank you, Chris, for um, being here and bringing your wisdom and insights um, to awakenings to help us awaken. Well, I couldn't be more honored right now between you and Melanie Roosevelt. I feel like, <laughs> okay, life is good. Life, life is, is good. good. Life is good. Yeah, life is good. So uh, until next time, everyone, uh, we look forward to hearing from you and blessings to you. Have a good morning, night, or afternoon, wherever you're at.